Hey guys, this is a video on the Canadian Forces Aptitude Test, also known as CFAT. Uh, I did my test recently uh, in March 2021. Uh, prior to my test, I tried to look online uh, pretty much every part of the web to see if I can get a real understanding of the test itself and what to expect, uh, pretty much like a small guide. Uh, but, you know, sadly couldn't find anything. Uh, so after my test, I thought that it would be a good idea to make a video and help everyone out there, uh, you know, people who are out there who want to go and write the test anytime soon or, you know, in the near future. Uh, you know, hopefully things, you know, remain the same. Uh, either way, this there won't be much changes. Even if there are, there won't be any major changes. But uh, this, should, this should really help you. Uh, to really understand what the test is all about um, so hopefully you guys find this video really helpful uh, so let's move on all right I think by now most of you know that uh, the CFAT test uh, Canadian First Aptitude Test com uh, consists of three parts the English uh, spatial ability and math problem solving um, each section have different set of questions and different time slots so for example, uh, the English section, you'll have 15 questions and you'll have 5 minutes um, to solve the 15 questions, which adds up to 20 seconds per question. Uh, the next one is uh, spatial ability. Again, you have 15 questions in this section. Uh, you'll have a total of 10 minutes to solve them. And if you do the math, it's 40 seconds per question. So you've got to really think fast and move on. Uh, the last is uh, the math problem solving. Uh, it has 30 questions, and uh, you need, you have you'll have 30 minutes, uh, which adds up to one minute per question. Uh, just a heads up: no calculators are allowed, so you really, really need to get into the habit of practicing uh, math problems that are you know related to long divisions, multiplications, uh, you know subtractions of decimals, fractions. Uh, you know those kind of things and really really get into the habit of uh, timing yourself and solving a question uh, like I said here you know you have one minute uh, to read that question to understand what the question is asking for and lastly how you will go ahead and solve the problem so one minute per question uh, so uh, in total uh, you will have uh, 45 minutes to complete the entire test uh, I will talk about uh, each section separately um, and just to give you a heads up, uh, whatever is your score will not be revealed to you at the end of the test. Um, you know, it's, it's believed that if they tell you the score, you know, you might feel that, you know, you are, you're not good for the forces. Uh, you, m you might feel demotivated. So due to that reason, they don't tell you the score. <clears throat> they believe that it's misleading. And well, now you can say that, then why do they have the test? Uh, they, they obviously, they mark the test, uh, and based on their way how it's set up, uh, depending on how s what kind of score you got in what section, that just helps them to tell you or advise you, you know, these are your military options or military career options that you can get in uh, for a successful career in the forces. So don't don't be surprised, you know, if they don't tell you the score. However, you can ask them that you know how you did in each section. Uh, they will be able to tell you, um, you know, you know if you did really well or average in each and every section. Uh, but again, you know, don't be surprised if they don't give you the score. All right, uh, so in the English section, uh, what to expect? Uh, you know, you will be asked uh, to find uh, meanings of certain words. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've given you pictures out there to give you an idea. Uh, they will ask you to find uh, opposite meanings. Uh, they will ask you uh, word relations uh, to create a series or similar meanings. Uh, again, uh, to give you an idea, I've given you the pictures on the screen there. So these 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 kind of questions uh, you should be expecting when you're doing the English uh, part of the section here. All right, uh, the second section is the special ability. Um, as you can see uh, from the picture there, the type of questions that they're going to ask you. So you really need to familiarize 
on how to solve this kind of three-dimensional uh, structure problems. Uh, you, you really need to practice because at the end of the day, uh, there are no hidden tricks or tips, uh, but you know you will become a pro uh, the more you practice. There are tons of uh, materials out there. Uh, you know you, there are some paid and non-paid. So the more you expose yourself uh, in solving this kind of uh, problems, the better you will be on your test. So again, you know practice, practice, practice. Uh, the more you visualize in your mind, uh, the more you see these kind of problems, the easier and more confident you will be uh, in solving these problems on the day of your test. All right, uh, the last part is the math problem solving. Um, it, it is the chunk of the test here. Um, you know, as, as, as described earlier, there are 30 questions, you have 30 minutes. So the things that you can expect um, is, like I told you in the past, uh, longer multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, involving five to six digits. So take, take, take your time, try to understand um, how to solve those longer division multiplication. There are some tricks involved, but again, depending on uh, how you were taught in high school, uh, you can stick to those and you know practice every day so you can be pro in solving really longer uh, calculations in a short period of time. Like I said, you have one minute per question or 60 seconds. So you know every seconds count when you're doing the test. And trust me, um, the time is going to fly really fast because you know you'll be just zoned out trying to solve these problems. So the time can pass really fast. So you really need to keep. Uh, keep in mind that you have only 60 seconds and you need to really really understand the question within the first read because you know you won't have time to read the question again and again and understand and solve you know there won't be much time left uh, and the type of question that you will be uh, expecting will be number series uh, there will be multiplication division of fractions decimal numbers uh, there will be, of course, math word problems, calculations related to percentage, ratio, proportion, taxes, and commissions. Uh, you will be given, for example, you will be given a problem. Let's say Sam makes ten thousand dollar a week. You know how much will he be earning a year? Uh, and then they will. There will be a follow up questions. Uh, what will be his? Uh, final income after there's a 10% tax on it uh, you, you know you'll be given a various type of scenario so again uh, there, there are tons of materials out there uh, look for it if you have to pay go ahead there are a lot of free materials as well but you really really need to practice uh, this kind of questions again the more you practice the more you will be confident in solving this kind of questions uh, on the day of your test um, and another th another questions that you should be expecting is the geometric problems uh, that relates to calculating area of rectangle, uh, square, uh, volume of rectangle, square, sphere, cylinders. So you know you just just get into the habit of memorizing those formulas uh, that you would be needing to solve these questions because again uh, formulas must you cannot do without really memorizing the formulas. So that's a must you must understand and at the same time memorize because when a question is given you really need to have that in your mind so you can solve it fast and save time and lastly you will be expecting visual problem series um, just to give you an idea I've, I've given the pictures so those are kind of questions that you should be expecting and they're really really easy uh, there isn't really much hard mind to get involved in uh, it's it's kind of like a logical problem series, a visual problem series. Uh, again, have a have a practice on those. You don't have to practice too much because it's pretty straightforward. But if you're that kind of person that you really need practice, then go ahead um, and practice and make sure that you really understand how the series should continue when you're asked that questions in exam. All right, guys. Uh, this is just a 
just to show you how the computer screen looks like when you're doing the test um, you know good thing that there is a timer at the left top corner there uh, it will show you time that is left uh, as you're doing the test uh, and just below that you'll have list of questions uh, you know as you complete the question you will see the question gets highlighted um, so that way you know that you have done that uh, you'll have question and then you have the multiple choice um, just to give you a heads up um, once you have chosen your answer uh, of course click the next um, do not go back do not click that back button uh, if you see it um, the reason being because when I uh, when I was doing my f test uh, accidentally I clicked back and the entire screen froze and it gave me an error that I couldn't go back until I have finished my test uh, so I think in this case the back button means to go and review your answers but uh, again I I don't know it could be my luck but I would I would highly recommend that to not press back um, you know just go ahead solve the question because eventually uh, when there's some time left uh, the, the once you finish the test at every section you'll be you'll you'll, you'll have the option to go back and review your answers so you know until unless you really haven't finished uh, just keep clicking next to go to the next questions so you know I, I hope nothing happened nothing goes wrong but again avoid clicking that back button uh, so again to give you an idea this is how the screen is going to look like um, you know you'll have question at the center multiple choice at the bottom you select and then you click next and goes to, and you go to the next question alright so tips when writing the test um, so when you log into your computer uh, there will be an introductory video explaining about the test and then uh, when you do multiple sections for example when you do when you're about to start English there will be an introductory video about the English portion of it they're gonna give you explanation as to what kind of question they're gonna ask you and how you should be solve solving them uh, same thing it will happen when you're about to start with spatial ability and then math problem solving and just a heads up uh, let's say you are done with one specific section for example English and you let's say you finished earlier and there are two minutes left um, but you won't be able to go to the next section so if there's if, it, if the timer shows there are two minutes left um, but you want to jump to the next section and get it done the system won't let you uh, so what you can do at that time is you know you still have some time left if you want you can go back and review your answers uh, but you know just adds up if you finish earlier you cannot move to the next section and uh, one last tip that I would like to give you guys on the math problems um, so if let's say if you're given a math problem that involves some really long calculations um, don't solve all the way till the end like oh, sorry don't calculate all the way till the end uh, for example 526 times 58 the answer is 30,508 now what I'm what I mean by saying is that when you're doing the multiplication in this case the moment you see you're done two digits so let's say you get 08 you can immediately go back to your multiple choices and see which answer or which option ends with 08 trust me out of all the four there will be one which will actually end with 08 so you can just stop your math calculation right there and select that choice so you can go to the next question it will help you uh, save some time because there will be some questions that you will be stuck you won't be you won't be able to finish it within a minute so if you save some time in other questions then at the end you can use that time to finish up for the questions that you're having hard time so yeah this is this is my uh, advice I don't I hope you get it what I meant by saying that so that way you 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 kind of like saving time and if you need any extra time in the in, in the next questions 
you still have some time to spend. All right, so tips before a week of the test. So let's say you have a week left. You know, by this time, you should already be prepared for the test. Um, and I hope by then you have practiced enough to ace the test. Uh, for any odd reasons, you know, if you're working full time and you know, you're know you preoccupied with a lot of other activities, uh, then please make sure that you take at least three hours a day or two hours a day to practice because practice because now you have only seven days left you know it, it's now or never you you really need to get into that practice so that on the day of the test you're fully confident and you know you can ace that part of the test now when you when you do well in your test trust me you will be confident to move to the next step you know if you're not if you if you really haven't done that well you might be demotivated like you might think that oh you know what I can't do it but I'm trust me the test is really really not that hard as you know people talk about or you know people might say it out there because uh, you know at the at the end of the day if you have really practiced you can do well trust me and I'm just an average guy I really haven't taken um, grade 12 math uh, in my high school and I, I did I did pretty well and I say that because I practiced so much that you know I was I was really ready for the test and so it's just, so again it's not only just about you know practicing and being ready for the test you should also be doing other stuff like you know having a good diet and you know avoid eating any junk food try to have really good meals I'm talking about some healthy meals uh, drink plenty of water uh, you need to keep yourself hydrated and trust me it will help you a lot and if you really get the chance you know depending on where you're living if you have that weather uh, try to go for walks for 15 20 minutes uh, or you know if you like to run please go for it it will help you again and another important factor is maintain a consistent sleep cycle um, you know, I don't know, depending on your lifestyle, you might be a night person or a morning person or a day person, but most of the time, the test that you'll be taking is during morning, like it'll be like 7 or, or sorry, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, depending on your local time. Uh, so you really need to understand that on the day of the test, you will be waking up in the morning. So if you so if your sleep cycle is about you know waking up in the afternoon or later in the evening, uh, you really need to understand that that's not going to really help you on the day of the test. So you will feel sleepy, you will feel gloomy. So make sure a week before you start to have a good sleeping cycle, a consistent sleeping cycle, depending on the time of your test. So let's say your test your test is in the morning. So make sure you wake up try to wake up six or seven in the morning so in that way on the day of your test you don't feel something weird you don't feel it's something new and the last again the last tip is practice uh, for the test at the same time as you would be writing the test and what I mean by this is let's say you know you're scheduled to write your test at 9 a.m. in the morning so wake up at 7 or 8 and be on your study table by nine o'clock so that way you are waking up your brain at the same time that you would be writing the test so on, on the day of your test you know you, you won't be you won't be feeling that uh, need of that uh, boost to wake up and you know start solving those problems so again you know maintain that consistent life cycle uh, sorry sleep cycle uh, practice for the test same time as your actual test uh, be hydrated all the time drink plenty of water and you know lastly have a good diet all right so let's talk about the tips the day before the test uh, it's pretty straightforward um, you know just make sure that that same day the day before you're eating properly you're having your breakfast lunch dinner uh, so you know, don't skip any meals on that day because you really need to be in the best shape 
uh, just the day before your test. Um, you can also go through your study materials. Again, just relax. Uh, don't go too hard uh, on your brain. Don't stress out. You know, just go through your go through your study materials just you know as if you're reading them, and you know just brushing up. Uh, it's kind of like a last minute thing. You know, if you have the time, uh, again depending on the weather, you know, go for a short walk or for a quick run. Um, and again, make sure that the whole day you're hydrated, drinking plenty of water or fluids if you like. And lastly, um, you know, avoid any alcoholic drinks or any sugary drinks, I would say. Um, and, you know, go to bed, you know, avoid any unnecessary uh, screen time. And he here what I mean is, uh, you know, don't don't watch TVs or any kind of shows that, you know, that would take your attention off completely. Um, you know, try to be away from your cell phones at least for an hour or so before you go to bed. So that way, you know, your, your, your brain, your body is completely relaxed. So guys, you know, just keep, keep all these pointers in head the day before the test. All right, so you know it's your test day, the big day. Um, these are my tips uh, on what you should be doing. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, don't take a hot shower. I mean, obviously, when you wake up in the morning, everybody takes shower here. Um, don't take that hot shower. Um, try to take a warm, cooler shower. Uh, the reason why, um, again, depending on person to person, it might vary. But when you take a hot shower, uh, you will let your body to, you know, get to that level uh, where you might feel a little bit lazy. So that cool shower will kind of like wake you up. It will give you that morning zest uh, so that you're kind of like awake, like mentally and physically you're all awake and ready to start the day. And of course, after the shower, just make sure you know you eat something. Uh, you know it, it is must. You really need to eat something. If you if you're one of the, for if you're one of those person who doesn't like to eat in the morning, uh, please try to have something because you're going for a test. You will need a lot of brain working out there. So you need some kind of energy, uh, or some kind of boost. You know to get your brain started working. So eat something. And try to have some sweet chocolates. Um, uh, um, what I mean is avoid candy. Uh, try to have some chocolates. Uh, if not, try to have some anything that's sweet uh, because that, that helps you some time uh, to activate that you know, brain power. Uh, it, it, it kind of like gives you that sugar kick so that you know, you're a little bit physically and internally a little bit awake and ready for the day. Uh, I've attended uh, one uh, one seminar for student success in my uh, university. Um, one of the career counselor was telling me that having something sweet in the morning before going to class or before writing a test uh, kind of like helps you. Um, I'm not sure if it did help me, but I think it did. So you know, my recommendation out there would be you know after you've eaten something. Try to take something sweet. Uh, you know, I hope that helps. Um, and uh, dress up loose. Uh, of course, you don't want to dress up too tight because um, depending on your test room, uh, it can be hot or it can be cold. So either way, you want to make sure that you dress up. And if it's if 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 it's too cold, then you can dress up in layers so that. Once you're writing the test, if you're feeling warm, you can loosen up one or two layers. But again, my personal advice to you would be dress dress up loose as much as possible and so that you feel comfortable when writing the test. And what I have what I have done uh, was not take a water bottle uh, during my test. Uh, so that kind of like uh, f made me feel a bit dehydrated. Um, during the test so I wish I had taken or I wish someone told me to take a water bottle with me uh, so you know during the test you know if you feel thirsty or if you feel dehydrated um, you can 
drink some water and trust me it, it is gonna make you feel really comfortable during the test and I, I've given a picture here uh, again depending on where you guys are uh, it could be different but I think it is pretty much consistent uh, the setup where you write the test it's a little bit smaller cramped up space so if you're used to doing or practicing uh, you know for your test on a big tables or a big space uh, you might be not comfortable writing a test in a small confined area so you know be prepared or don't be surprised if if, if you have a really small cramped up uh, space to work on and do your test so just to give an example that's how you know your test setup most likely will look like so get used to working in small confined uh, cubicle spaces all right so looks like we have come to an end of the video here uh, so last tips or uh, what 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 to expect when you arrive on the day of your test uh, of course, uh, make sure that you go, you arrive early at the test center. Uh, what I would suggest to you guys to do a quick Google map search to see how long it's going to take you to go to the test center uh, from your location. And uh, depending on the time, if you know if it's if it's the rush hour uh, and if it's in downtown, you know how things can get really crazy. So again, time yourself. Make sure that you guys have enough time. Uh, to arrive at the test center at least 15 to 20 minutes early in case if you guys run out you know run into some traffic or accidents God forbid uh, you, st you will still have some time uh, left to make out those lost times uh, during travel and uh, upon your arrival uh, obviously you'll be checking uh, you'll be checked in by a security guard uh, to make sure that you're not carrying any kind of weapons um, during my uh, test, uh, there was there was an individual who carried uh, kind of like a, a keychain knife, you know, just kind of like a tool. Uh, they did take it from uh, him and uh, they gave it gave it back to him after the test. So do not bring any kind of sharp tools, knives, or any kind of those materials. Uh, you know, why to be the embarrassing guy or girl out there? So keep your, you know, tools and all the other stuff that you really don't need in the exam at home. Uh, just come with all the required documents. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, make sure you have your ID with you so they can check, you know, you're the right person writing the test. And, you know, after that, you'll be seated. Uh, after the security check, you'll be seated. And then... Uh, you will be called in by a medical uh, examiner. Uh, they'll just go through some basic uh, medical questions to see, you know, if you have any kind of allergies or any, if you have gone through any kind of medications or any kind of surgeries in the past, uh, so that it gives, so they get an idea if any occupation that you are going to choose or will be chosen, if that would uh, hinder your performance or any, any, anything like that. So again, make sure you answer all those questions <coughs> as honestly as possible. It's nothing to hide, really. And uh, once you're done with your medical questions, um, there will be an administrative officer who will go through all the documents with you uh, for that you bought along with you for submission. Uh, they'll just check to make sure that there are no errors, everything is consistent, and you know everything is in right order. And you know everything is filled in you haven't missed anything and uh, also they'll take signatures uh, and they'll validate a couple of personal informations to make sure they're all up to date and uh, so if you're if you're in a group uh, they uh, the people will make sure that you know everybody have done all these steps and after that you guys will be taken to the test room uh, there will be an invigilator or test administrator who will give you specific instructions on what to do. Uh, they will be uh, allocated seats. The, te the test ad administrator will tell you where will you be sitting. Uh, you cannot randomly choose your spot. They will tell you where you will be sitting uh, and pretty much give you all the basic details uh, about the test itself. 
Alright guys, so we have come to an end to this video. Uh, I hope my presentation and all the materials that I've discussed here uh, really helped you guys to understand um, what the test is all about and you know what you should be doing to really be a shining star on that day. Um, you know, if there are anything specific that I didn't cover and you guys have some questions, uh, please reach out to your recruiting center at the earliest as possible before you write the test. Um, they are your trusted source of information. Uh, so yeah, feel free to reach out to them. They're super helpful. And, uh, you know, I wish you guys all the best uh, in, in the test. I hope, you know, all your dreams come true. Uh, the Canadian Armed Forces is a great place to serve um, and you know it's a very rewarding career so again uh, all the best good luck God bless Canada